Let us pray. Holy God, we come here this morning to hear a word from you spoken to us. May the words of my mouth be your words to us today, Lord. May our hearts be open to your message, and anything that is not your word, may you silence it. Amen. This morning, we're celebrating Epiphany, a holy day that commemorates the visit of the wise men to baby Jesus. Sometimes the wise men are also called magi or kings, but in any case, they bring gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh to the Christ child. The events of Epiphany are recorded in Scripture in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. And while the story has become synonymous with a tidy little group of three wise men from the East, in fact, there are actually two groups of wise men in this story. First, we have the famous wise men from the East, the ones who appear in our manger scene. The magi, or magicians, astrologers, they were, people who looked for meaning in the stars. I'm going to call these guys the magi for the sake of clarity. And second, we have the lesser known wise men, the chief priests and the scribes, religious leaders whom King Herod calls upon to advise him about what the scriptures say about the birth of the Messiah. And I'm going to call those guys the wise men. This morning, I want to focus our attention on the latter. Those lesser known wise men of Epiphany, whom the Bible names as chief priests and scribes. These wise men are steeped in the Hebrew scriptures. They know their Old Testament Bibles backward and forward. And they would have known the New Testament too, but it didn't exist yet. The wise men know their scriptures so well, in fact, that the writer of the Gospel of Matthew finds it fitting to include references and quotations from the Old Testament scriptures, not just one, not just two, not just three, but seven times in these short 12 verses. We have, ex we have references from Exodus, Micah, 2 Samuel, Numbers, 1 Kings, Isaiah, and the Psalms. The wise men knew their Bibles. And because they know their Bibles, the wise men know that the Messiah is going to be born in Bethlehem. They know that the Messiah will be visited by strangers from the east bearing gifts. They know that a great light will lead people to the Christ child. And yet, they haven't gone to see him themselves. The wise men haven't found Jesus. In fact, they're not even looking for him. Isn't it odd that the leaders in society at that time, who should have been best equipped to discover the birth of Jesus, are some of the last people who actually do? Isn't it odd that astrologers or magicians who travel from a whole other part of the world find Jesus first? Now on Christmas Eve, we heard about the shepherds visiting the baby Jesus. And that was significant because the shepherds were poor and probably looked down upon by society. 
The shepherds remind us of God's preferential option for the poor and the marginalized. But the magi are a whole other story entirely. The magi are equivalent to those in our present day society that we might call new age. The magi are the practitioners of yoga and horoscopes and tarot cards and crystals and alternative medicine and communing with nature. And the wise men, even when they find out where the magi are going, aren't willing to go with them. Maybe they're just too busy. Maybe they don't believe that the Messiah is really there. Or maybe they just can't imagine that a group of strangers like the Magi might know something about finding Jesus that they don't know. As Christians today, <clears throat> as the wise men and women in our world who have studied the scriptures and committed our lives to faith in Christ, do we, like the wise men, ever fail to find Jesus? Epiphany celebrates the radical inclusivity of our God. The arrival of the Magi from the East signals to the world that this Savior lying in a manger is not just for the Jews, he's also for the Gentiles. He is for everyone. He's here to save the whole world. That's the epiphany of epiphany. But in order to discover that epiphany of inclusion, the wise men would have to follow the weird old magi to find Christ. They would have to talk to the magi, interact with the magi, sit down for a meal with the magi, and that's not something that they're willing to do. Do we as Christians, do I, as a Christian, ever miss out on the epiphany of epiphany? Do we miss out on the radical inclusivity of our God? Do we take a radically inclusive Savior and insist that he is exclusive instead? My mom was here visiting over Christmas. And while she was here, she taught my daughter a new phrase. <clears throat> no shoes, no shirt, no service. Now, I can't remember the exact details of when and where this phrase came up in our family, but I can tell you with confidence that the reason why my mom taught Esme this phrase is because she loves to take her shoes off in places where it is inappropriate to do so. You know, places like the dentist or the deli counter. And so we've all been working on trying to rid her of her bad manners. Thus, no shoes, no shirt, no service has become a commonly uttered phrase in our family when we're out in public. We've had to explain to Esme the meaning of the phrase and that it is necessary for restaurants and other places of business to exclude people who aren't wearing proper attire from their place of business due to hygiene and also the comfort of other patrons. Now, I can't think of any churches who have a sign that says no shoes, no shirt, no service, although there's probably one out there, I don't know. But <clears throat> how many invisible signs do we as Christians put out there in the world to signal to outsiders of the faith that they will not be accepted by us unless they conform to our expectations? How many invisible signals do we give off that exclude those who aren't like us from being fully embraced into our lives and into our communities? 
No shared love of sermons and hymns. No service. No joint investment in maintaining sacred traditions. No service. You don't look or dress or think like me. No service. You smell like smoke or you smell like alcohol. No service. You let a curse word slip out. No service. You have relationship issues or mental health issues. No service. Earlier this week, I posed a question on my Facebook page in honor of Epiphany, asking anyone who didn't go to church if they could tell me about a time in their lives when they behaved or believed in a way that was more Christian than the Christian people around them. And one of my friends said this. She said, quote, It isn't one person for me that turned me off to the church. Rather, it's the collective viewpoint of those on the extreme edges who insist that their church is the only right one. Those who forget that Jesus loved everyone from the lepers to the prostitute. That one of the commandments says, love thy neighbor as yourself, not love only thy neighbors who look and act like you. I wonder if when we, as Christians, and I am 100% including myself here, I wonder if when we as Christians insist on privileging our own sensibilities, our own tastes, privileging our own understanding of what we think is acceptable and best, do we ever miss out on finding Jesus? Do we ever care so much about the traditions and the ways of being that give us comfort that we are unwilling to listen to, much less follow strange strangers who make us feel uncomfortable? And in so doing, do we fail to discover the new thing that God is doing in Christ himself? In the story of the Epiphany, the good news for the wise men is that the new thing that God is doing in Jesus the Christ is right there, ready to be found just down the street in Bethlehem, just outside the doors of their holy temple. They just need the strange strangers who make them feel a little bit uncomfortable to help them get there. As Bible commentator R. Allen Culpepper writes, the Magi could not find the king they were looking for until they heard from those who knew the scriptures. But those who knew the scriptures, that's the wise men, did not recognize the sign that the Messiah had been born. And so the wise men needed the magi to help them find God. Beloved, this story is audacious. The notion that those who know the scriptures need those who don't know the scriptures in order to find God, is that really in the Bible? Yeah. It really is. It's an epiphany. In later years, the Christ child will grow up and he will say things like, I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you invited me in. Jesus will make clear to the wise men and women of his day that it is in and through people like the Magi that God is found. It is in and through religious outsiders, those who do not meet our expectations of acceptability, those who do not look or think or act like us, that God and the new thing that God is doing in Christ is found. 
I had a conversation this week with someone who was asking me what I thought about hanging out with unbelievers, people who aren't Christian. And I found myself telling this person that I thought that hanging out with unbelievers was perhaps the most Christian thing that a Christian could do. I found myself remembering all the times in my life when people who would not call themselves Christians had actually, ironically, led me to Christ. Like the time that my Jewish friend took me to a concert by a musician that I really loved during a difficult, really difficult time in my life. And that night felt like a profound act of love and grace. Or the time that my dad was dying and friends brought over a meal, giving us the gift of not just a hot plate of food, but comfort and protection and the assurance that we were not alone. Or the time that I had to carry my child kicking and screaming out of the grocery store and a stranger chased me down in the parking lot to give me Esme's rain boots that she had kicked off of her feet in the midst of her tantrum. Or the time that I had no friends and a group of strangers welcomed me in as one of their own. Or the time that my church wanted to reach out in the community, but like most churches, we had absolutely no idea how to do that. And a group of teachers and administrators at the worst elementary school in town showed us the ropes. Beloved, we as men, wise men and women, as religious insiders, we need religious outsiders to find Christ. And the good news is that Christ is right out there, ready to be found. If only we will humble ourselves and follow the Magi. Amen.